Hello, my name is Jennifer Childress, and I'm an electrical engineering team lead at FTI. Thank you for joining the conference today. The team that I lead does all the short circuit coordination and arc flash studies for FTI. FTI consists of three areas of expertise. Faith Technologies is a national electrical contractor providing construction services as well as pre-construction services, including design and value-added engineering opportunities. Accelerate is an, an electrical manufacturer, and Entech is a provider of clean energy solutions. While my group supports all areas of FTI, we have two main focuses. One of these is doing short circuit coordination and arc flash studies for construction projects. For these projects, whether we do the design internally or not, my group verifies that the equipment to be installed meets short circuit ratings, is coordinated per code, and has the best art flash possible while maintaining coordination. This work includes both industrial and commercial properties. The second focus of my group is supporting the electrical risk management group at FTI. This is what we will be focusing on in this talk. This work is mostly in the industrial sector where electrical equipment is likely to be changed and adjusted often and worked on regularly. The Electrical Risk Management Group helps customers to develop electrical safe work programs. One reason this is particularly important to our industrial customers is the need to access equipment while live for adjustment or testing. When live work cannot be avoided, risk management becomes even more important and the involvement of staff working on the equipment is invaluable. It is important to consider all areas of risk rather than just relying on a label or a list of PPE. For example, where are the live parts? What is the level of exposure to them? Is it possible to do this work when the system is down or when live parts are blocked off? What are ways we can work more safely if we do have to do live work? For one customer, an arc flash event at a testing station triggered them to reach out to us. A study was completed and to their credit, recommendations for faster breakers were implemented immediately by the customer. About six months later, another event happened, but was stopped quickly by the recommended breaker, resulting in a much less concerning incident than the first. In addition to arc flash concerns, the ERM group helps customers develop and provide training for an electrical safe work practices program, which also includes live work permits, lockout tagout, requirements for qualified staff, comprehensive one-line diagrams, and more. The ERM group follows a six-step process that focuses not just on NFPA 70 and NFPA 70E and the IEEE 1584, but also on OSHA expectations. This process begins with a field visit from a highly qualified electrician, which includes IR scanning, a discussion of the scope and areas of specific concern for the customer, as well as a survey of the existing facility. Next, the survey information is conveyed to our CAD department for the creation of detailed one-line drawings. These include breaker settings, equipment location, smaller loads, and panel types. From there, the one-lines come to our engineering group and the data is entered into ETAP and reviewed by the engineers. From this, the engineering report is created. The electric electrician then returns to the site to review the engineering report with the customer, apply the labels, and to train the customer personnel. Depending on the type of plant and frequency of machine changeouts, a review of the site is recommended every one to three years or whenever a major change is made. Now I would like to look a little closer at two areas, the arc flash engineering and the PPE labeling steps. Faster breaker to reduce arc flash hazard might negatively affect coordination, making it trip before downstream devices. A slower breaker to improve coordination with downstream devices might create a higher arc flash energy. So how do we choose? We have to look at several factors, including the frequency of live work and the number and type of devices affected by the miscoordination. For example, if we're looking at a control panel, we might choose the faster breaker because someone is more likely to need to work in it live and make adjustments. And while this breaker does not coordinate with the downstream devices, they're all on the same machine. And if any of them trip, the machine is not usable. In this case, the arc flash hazard is more important than the coordination. However, if we are looking at a distribution panel right near the utility, 
we might choose the slower breaker. It's less likely that anyone will need to work on a distribution panel while it's live. And if the main for the panel were to trip before the feeder breakers, it would take out a whole section of the plant rather than just one machine. In this case, the coordination is more important. Obviously, in any case, we would always like to have both coordination and low arc flash, but it's not always possible, and our best judgment must be used to make a choice based on all of these factors. Here are just a few ways that ETEP is a powerful tool for doing short circuit coordination in arc flash studies. It's easy to model renewable sources. The results in the library files are reliable, and the help desk is always helpful. I'll talk about the scenarios, configurations, and wizards over the next few slides. In this example, there is a panel after a transformer that had high arc flash energy. The customer would like to lower that energy, so the engineer was looking at some possible solutions. One solution to this is to install a breaker disconnect ahead of the panel. As you can see, this breaker and wire are out of service in the base case. But in the mitigation case, they are turned on and we can see the effects of that solution. Utilizing scenarios allows the engineer to investigate different solutions without compromising the model of the existing building as it currently is. When we continually update the same facility year after year as part of a safety program, it's important to keep the unimplemented solutions separate from the base building model to avoid printing labels based on a solution that has not been applied in the field. If the customer does apply that solution, it's easy to update the model to include the change since the mitigation scenario already has it modeled. Configurations are another powerful tool in ETAP. The study in this example has four possible utility values. This job site has customer owned medium voltage gear that also needs to be included in the study. So the four utility values that you see in that image are an infinite bus, a utility that gives 50% of the secondary of the medium voltage to 480 volt transformers, and a high and a low value for the medium voltage calculations. We can't use the same high and low values as for the 480 volt equipment because when doing the infinite bus, there is no transformer to limit the current to the medium voltage gear, and we wind up with infinite energy at the medium voltage gear. Configurations can also be used to run the many paths for power on sites that have things like looped utilities, renewable power sources, or UPS systems with redundancy. They make it easy to test all possible options for power flow in a system. Now, when you get this many configurations, it starts to become difficult to keep track of what the report names are and what configuration you have your model set to when you are running the arc flash studies for each possibility. If you look carefully at the study case here, I have the configuration set to infinite bus, the arc flash study case set to a single phase arc flash study, but the report name is set to medium voltage and 10K. Wizards can help with this. The first image here is the scenario wizard. You can see that it's set up to run single phase devices with the 50% utility. All I have to do is hit run. The proper output report is also listed there. Once you have several studies set up in the scenario wizard, you can use the study wizard to run all of them at once. In the right hand image, once I hit run, it will run all of the cases that are listed in the parameters window. For this one, you can see that I have scenarios set up for arc flash single phase at infinite bus, arc flash single phase at 50%, arc flash three phase at both infinite bus and 50%, arc flash for the medium voltage at both one and 10K, and short circuit, short circuit reports for a single phase, three phase, and medium voltage. When you run the study wizard, it automatically runs each report and saves it in the proper report file. Then we can use the data analyzer to view the results. The analyzer can also compare the arc flash reports and provide you with the worst case arc flash for each item from all of the studies run. In this case, there are six studies and it will pick the worst case arc flash from those six. In my group, 
We have a template ETAP file set up that already has the basic study cases set with the proper options checked and wizards to run the infinite bus and 50% arc flash as well as short circuit studies. This not only makes it easier to run the studies, but keeps us consistent across the group in how we are doing the studies. One of the most important aspects of a true safety program for an industrial facility is the arc flash label. It's important when work is constantly being done that not only are labels on the equipment, but that they're useful to the employees that are working on the equipment. A complicated label that has too much information or too technical information is likely to be ignored by the people who need it the most. A label that is too simple or requires the end user to go look somewhere else for some of the information or to determine what PPE to wear is also likely to be of little use. To that end, our labels include not just the calories per centimeter squared, but also the PPE to make it easy for employees to be properly protected. We also use the true lockout tagout location for the fed from and not just the upstream device that tripped during the study. Another difference in our labels is that we use the bolted fault current on the label. The arcing fault is used to determine the arc flash, but is of little use in the field. The arc flash calories are already on the label. But the bolted fault is used to determine, determine the rating of the equipment and is helpful to the end user if they need to get any replacement parts or add a new breaker or other device to the equipment. Even with the concise information we provide on our labels, it is important to include training for the employees to fully understand the information on the label and how it is useful to them in performing their jobs. This is why we include the time for our electricians to go to the sites with the labeling and provide extensive training, not just on the labels, but on all expect expectations for a safe workplace. I hope that this will help you all make your workplaces safer. Thank you.